I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Rhodes? Where we're going, we don't need Rhodes. No. I am your father. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. You're listening to After the Ending, the only film podcast where we tell you what happens after the ending of your favorite films. And now, here are your hosts, Mike Spring and Phil Edwards. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to After the Ending. I'm Mike Spring. And I'm Phil Edwards. And we are back for another episode. If you're watching live, we're back. If you are watching or listening after the fact, we're back also, just back later, like a week <laughs> later, as opposed to like three minutes later, like we do in our live recordings. Yes, but we are back with our post credits episode after our main feature. And if you've just if you've missed that one, we talked about the Alien franchise and also went after the ending of The Wizard of Oz. So scoop back and watch that. Yes. Uh, on all the podcast channels and video places. But now for this one, the post credit uh, episode. Uh, Mike, do you want to let them know what we're talking about in this one? Sure. So we will, I'll, I'll start at least. We usually do our top five list, um, which is top five. Could be anything from, you know, top five you know, Batman costumes to top five spaceships. Who knows what last week we did last time we did top five monkey movies, which was a little bit of a train wreck, but, but kind of in a fun way. Um, yeah. But tonight we are actually doing a slightly different take on our top five list. Uh, Phil, it was your idea actually. So I thought I'll let you explain it. Tell people. What oh, it thank you. Yeah. Well, it's when we're doing these lists, it's usually we discuss either the day before or on the day it's saying, well, what are we going to do? What top five thing? And either one of us sends like a list of, what about top five this, top five that, blah, 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 blah. And we discuss which ones we like, which ones could work, or we save some of them, write them down on the list, which we then inevitably lose. And then wonder also whether we've done them before because we've now done 150 <laughs> odd of these now, maybe. Yeah, uh, we're up to almost 200 episodes now total. Yeah, so there's a mix of them there. But uh, this time I was just thinking uh, when I was sitting outside having a drink in the, the red hot weather, which we've got at the moment, I was just thinking I've been watching a, a few films lately. Well, because we always do. But I was, how about we talk about the last five films we've watched? And it's got to be the last five films, you know, can't miss any out. We can't do anything else like that. We can't pick and choose to make ourselves go, hey, aren't we cool for watching these films? Right. Or, right. you know, so, you know, we do watch every now and again, you want to watch a bit of rubbish. And sometimes right. that may happen. And we also thought it'd be good because it means we can talk about films which may not be trending, which may. We might not have watched in a long time. There might not be any new films one time we do it, or they could another time it could be all new films because we thought we could keep returning to this every every few weeks, months, whatever. It's a thing which keeps going. And also it means that you, listener and viewer, you can also get involved by letting us know your fra your last top five films. No, just forget the top thing. Your yeah. last five films you watched. All right. Right, yeah. So I said pretty quickly, I was like, I think we should I love this idea, but I definitely want to do it where it's our, it's only our last five films. We can't change them or leave anything out or add anything to make us look cooler. It doesn't matter if you were watching, you know, Barney or whatever. It's got to be our last five films. That's the fun of it, I think. Um, now, I'm personally very happy with my current last five films, but that was just luck of the draw. Um, so, uh, but also, yeah, this is a good way to also get to talk about some movies we don't normally get to talk about, especially if we're watching some newer stuff or maybe it's older stuff. But there's a lot of movies that don't fit into the after the ending format, right? Either because they already have sequels, they're not popular enough to get kind of really warrant a whole episode about them. Um, you know, things like that, or they're too current, right? We don't like to do yeah, after yeah. the ending for movies that are less than a couple of years old because then it's too spoilery for people who haven't had a chance to see them, right? So we tend to focus on older movies. And so sometimes then there's movies that come out we just don't really get a chance to talk about. Um, so this was kind of a fun way we thought to talk about some of those uh, and, and do our last five movies we've watched. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's it, exactly. I think also it might be good, I didn't mention at the time, it might be good to be mentioned as well, what we whether we watch them on streaming or Blu-ray, DVD, whatever, just, which might also, I don't know, might help people or might just people might suddenly realise they can watch these things there. But if, you, if you're watching this live on the After the Ending Facebook page, as always, you can leave comments yep. uh, as we're going, around. and we will see them, and we can throw them up on the screen as well. You can add to the discussion if need be, but that's what we're doing, our last five films watched. Yeah, yeah, I think this will be also helpful for those people watching live because maybe you haven't, uh, maybe you don't have a lot of thoughts on The Wizard of Oz, but maybe you've dialed in some of the films that we're talking about. Either you've seen them or you want to see them or you watched them recently too or whatever. So feel free to share your thoughts on these films as well. Um, so, Phil, how did you structure your list? Did you do anything in particular or are you just listing them? Hey, I've just got the list. As you said, we'll start with like the, the furthest away one, but it's just a, in order of what I watched them. 
that's what I did. I did the kind of my the oldest one on the list first, and then the newest yeah. one the yeah. most recently. So, um, all right. Well, do you want to kick us off then? Yeah, mine is a film from 2018. I I it's one of those films I thought I'd seen it, realized I hadn't, and it's uh, Bumblebee, the Transformers prequel. Yeah. And even though we were saying in the last episode, you know, prequels don't really work, this one was actually kind of good because mainly because the Transformer movies are such a goddamn mess when it <laughs> comes to the thing. I mean, there's moments, especially, especially the first one. I do there's bits I like in the first one, but as it went on and on and on, it became more Michael Bay, Michael Bay, Michael Boom, slow mo, camera pans around, and all that kind of thing. And it's sort of they never quite got the feel of the actual Transformers, which I loved growing up, either in the comics or the cartoon. But watching this one, uh, I know it got, it got reasonably good reviews when it first came out. I really enjoyed this one. It did feel like the the Transformers that I know and loved. I mean, the first 10 minutes are basically more Transformers, more proper Transformers yeah. than the entirety of the Michael Bay series of films. Uh -huh. You get to see Cybertron. You get to see the classic designs of Optimus Prime, Soundwave, all the other ones. Just It's just amazing. It's often like a blink and you miss it one because it's just the Cybertron bits are just... Don't add up too much for the whole of the film, but then we get get to Earth and we follow uh, Haley Steinfeld as she discovers Bumblebee. And the way it's done is just really good. There's not too many uh, Autobots or Decepticons, so it's not overload. There's not it's you don't get the sensory overload you do with the Michael Bay film. So I just Ooh. really like it. it's very charming, a nice little story. I like the fact that John Cena as well. He's sort of he's trying to find Bumblebee. But at one point when the Decepticons approach and there's like a, a meeting with all these other heads in this top secret thing, they go, well, we should believe them and stuff. And he's going, yeah, but they're called Decepticons. Does that not <laughs> raise alarm bells? Yeah. But yeah, that was my, uh, that's the one, Bumblebee from 2018, which I think I saw on Netflix. I am glad you finally watched it, Phil. You might yeah. recall from our conversations at the time, I'm a huge fan of Bumblebee. I think it's yeah, the, yeah. the best Transformers film. I wish it had been the first Transformers film. I think the whole franchise would have been much better. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, it's terrific. It's got humor. It's got good characters. It's got heart. Haley Steinfeld is great. Bumblebee is great. Uh, there's a lot, like you said, that first ten minutes on, on Cybertron is just amazing. It was like watching the cartoon cut from my childhood. Yeah, cut yeah. to life. Um, it's a great movie, and I'm sad that it came out when it did because the franchise was already kind of on its last legs, and that's why it was the least successful of all of them because people were sort of like, yeah, yeah, another Transformers movie is going to be kind of terrible, but it's fantastic. So excellent, Absolutely. excellent choice. It, there is that trilogy of uh, CG animated uh, Transformers films. I can't remember the yeah. full time of it, but I've not yet watched that. But it did make me, after watching that, I think I'm going to visit them because I've had some people seem to really like them, some people don't, but I'm going to give at least the first one a go and see what that's yeah, like. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a comment from one of our regulars, Christine, saying, I still haven't seen it. I forgot about Bumblebee. Well, you got to watch it because it's really good. Even if you're not a Transformers fan, I think you'll like it. And that tells you what a good film it is, right, Phil? Yeah. I think it's a movie where even if you're not a Transformers fan in general, it's a good enough, enjoyable enough movie that you can enjoy it for what it is. It's just like an action adventure movie that has yeah. robots in it. You it's know? got a real good throwback thing. I mean, it's set in the 80s anyway. It's but it's good. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it is a good soundtrack, yeah, but it's set in the 80s, but it also has the feel of like an 80s movie, you know, those ones you watch yes. when you were – you know, you know your formative years, and you, it's it's a it's a lot of fun. I mean, it really, yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, my number. I'm going to count them down, but like I do our list, just because it makes yeah. it work better for my brain. So my number five, the 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 oldest of the five most recent movies I've seen was actually in theaters, uh, and it was Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Oh, okay. I love the first Escape Room movie. I think it's fantastic. It's a great horror film that has almost no blood or gore in it, which I love. Um, in fact, I watched it again. I watched it the second time. I watched it with my daughter, who's fourteen, and she loves it. thinks It's, it's like one of her favorite movies. Uh, so we went and saw Escape Room two, um, and it's fantastic. It's just as bit as good as the first one. Uh, and what's really great is they are clearly building a franchise. Um, okay. There's neat little connections to the first film. Um, it's really nicely sets up a third film. It's sort of building this um, this sort of universe a little bit, not overdoing it. I mean, the main thrust of the film is still a bunch of people in escape rooms that they're trying to kill them, right? That they don't escape, yeah, yeah. they're going to die. Um, but they are definitely sowing these seeds or planting these seeds for this franchise to sort of continue in a way that is is a little there's like a, a little bit of an overarching story with this mysterious company that's that's pulling these people into these escape rooms and um, I it's, they're just really neat films and if you haven't watched them I highly recommend them um, like I said they are technically horror movies but there's no blood or guts in them almost at all uh, yeah. they're they're just tense and they're fun and they're really enjoyable and so I was I was 
very pleased to see that the, the filmmakers, the second one, really understand that people who like the first one and the nuances of it and the, the, the kind of the, the, the overarching story they set up are, really like that part of it. And they played that up and, and kind of I feel like they're, they're building a fan base. Um, so I'm looking forward to this franchise continuing on for a long time, hopefully. Uh, but it was great. So cool. I've not seen I've not seen either of them. Was the first one the one with a Deborah and Wall in it? Yes, it is. Yeah, because yeah. I think when that one came out, there was another one with a similar title. Yeah, that was. Like, I think there was a, another one. There's like a lower budget, like or maybe yeah. direct video or something. This was a theatrical yeah. release. Did fairly well, um, and now the sequel is out, and and they're both terrific. So you should you should definitely watch them. Okay, I'll give that a go. They're better than I think people will think they are. Uh, we've had a comment as well from uh, Christine. Do you want to throw that up? Sure. Which is very nice. Thank you very much for those lovely words. There we go. She says, what I love about After the Ending is that I get a list of movies to watch, watch or rewatch, like Almost Famous, which I watched a few days ago because you mentioned it. Awesome. We did do, uh, well, I think yeah. it was our last After the Ending. It was, it was Almost Famous, uh, which is a terrific movie. And uh, I'm glad you got to watch it. I hope you loved it because it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, very thanks. It's always nice to know that uh, what we're saying is there. Uh, yeah, we talk like about it. movies to help, uh, to, to inspire other people, right? Yeah. That's, that's the whole point of it, yeah. Okay, well, my number four is uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp from 2018, oh, okay. because I've been doing the whole going through the Marvel movies in chronological order. Mm. I saw, and Black Widow just came out as well, but I saw that a while back. It doesn't make this list. That was before this list, but it was almost in order because it's set between Civil War and Black Panther, I think. We didn't quite oh, make right. it. It's right. sort of, it's almost, it almost works, but yeah. So I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, and I really do like the Ant-Man films. Paul Rudd is just, he's so good, and he's such a nice Nice guy. You just, I, I want to meet him. He seems really nice, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he's just, he's, and he's really good in the role. Uh, it's really funny. It's one of the funnier, I think the Ant Man films are one of the funnier ones of the the Marvel MCU, but mm -hmm. I really like what it is. The bad guy or the bad girl, the bad person, uh, Ghost is, is, uh, is pretty cool. Walton Coggins, the whole truth serum. It's not truth serum. I love all that, but cool effects, quantum realm. And I'm really looking after seeing the end of Loki. I'm really intrigued now to see what. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, the uh, the third Ant-Man movie is going to be like because that's going to tie in with people and elements that are in the end of the Loki series. But uh, yes, that was my fourth film on yeah. this list. Ant-Man well, and the Wasp. Good. It's a lot of fun. You probably many of you have probably seen it, but it's I've been, I've enjoyed what going back and watching all the Marvel movies. They all seem to have been built. It all seems to have added to them. Knowing what comes afterwards and seeing them close together, like one a week. It really adds to them, builds the whole world. And and some of the ones which at first I was thinking I didn't enjoy as much, even they've been elevated and work a lot better. Absolutely. Uh, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, which obviously I love, um, has one of, hands down, one of the best after the credit sequences of all the Marvel movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which it's one of the, it's, it's a huge part of Endgame as well. Isn't yeah, it? But it's exactly. Really, really it's it's yeah. utterly fantastic. Uh, all right, great. Well, it sounds like you've had some good movies to watch. So that's Yeah, it's been, I've been, I've had, yeah. it's not a bad I list, actually. Think. I like most of mine as well, except for this next one, number four. <laughs> this is the one you know what is. The test. Yeah, yeah. I, I blame you for this one, Phil. It's uh, a film you, I loved. Yes. Do you want to tell people what my number four is, Phil? His number four is a film called The Empty Man from uh, last 2019 or 2020, which yeah. I was talking about last week in my recommendations. Yeah. It's a horror yeah. film, and it's it was, I, I thought I think it's absolutely brilliant. I think it's fantastic. It deals with uh, various philosophies about reality and Nietzscheism and it's very Lovecraftian. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. creepy and scary as well. It's got a brilliant 20 minute cold open as well before the title set. Which is but great. Unfortunately it does seem it's very very unlike the rest of the film afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. The opening 20 minutes was fantastic and everything else after that was just gobbledygook and garbage. And I'm mad at you. Well I was mad at you. I'm not anymore. But I did text Phil after I watched it and I was like, you know, I don't get mad at you very often, but uh, I'm mad at you for this one because he you know you recommend Phil recommended the empty man in last week's ATE recommendations and I, I happened to be able to watch it. So I took him up on that and um I did not like it at all. So uh I I it's just one of those films to me that had no point and never went anywhere and didn't make any sense and i just i didn't like it in any way shape or form i, I that is like and 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 it's two hours and 16 minutes and i'm sorry it is a long film there's a long no film. movie no horror movie especially although it's i don't know if it's it's kind of a horror movie but it is but no horror movie needs to be two hours and 16 minutes especially that one um so opening credits uh, opening sequence was great the steven root bit right in the middle for about five minutes was pretty great and everything else was not great 
But that's my number four, The Empty Man. Uh, you can take Phil's recommendation and watch it, or you can take mine and don't watch it. And then we'll know which one of us you like better. Yeah, that's true. But it's, it does seem to be, having read some reviews, but afterwards it does seem to split. Yeah, I can imagine. People, people either really like it or right. it like I do, or they just people really don't like it. There doesn't seem to be a middle ground. Right. And, and, and in all seriousness, not being rude about it like I was a minute ago, if you like metaphysical stuff, like really deep thoughts about the universe, like you said, the nature of life and, and you know, yeah. that type of stuff, then you'll probably dig this movie. If you don't like that kind of stuff, which I am not into that kind of stuff, you will not like this movie. So maybe use that as sort of your... Yeah, that's, that's probably a good way of doing it. Yeah, it does. There's lots of philosophical questions and debates going through it uh, and also inferred and, and things like that. And it's it deals with... Uh, uh, things from now. I don't want to say anything else in case it does could spoil things. But it's it's if you do like. I mean, one of the reasons I want I watched it as well. I've been playing lots of Call of Cthulhu and uh, role playing games, and I do like Lovecraftian things. And it does it does deal with those kind of cosmic horror things which man cannot know, and you just can't quite grasp, and will drive you insane. And there's that bit though I did like when he goes to the uh, he goes to like a camp, and there's people going around a, a fire. Yeah, and then when it's all they all start. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Oh, oof, there's some. There's yeah. a couple, a couple cool, creepy sequences, but and again, that the opening is fantastic. Yeah, um, really good, yeah, isn't it? Not, not for me. So yeah. okay, all right. Well, that's uh, my number three is uh, Desperado. Yeah, 1995. Yeah, huh? Yeah, uh, directed by Robert Rodriguez. I saw it was on. Uh, as one, I was just flicking through one of the streaming services. I can't remember which yeah, one. Yeah, that was on my list. Yeah, it's just just there. Uh, oh, is it on your list as well? Yeah, no, oh, no. On your streaming list. Oh, yeah, I put it in yeah. the queue, like because I saw that it was on one of the streaming services, and I was like, "Oh, I'm watching that again." It's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. So well, that's it because I I love the film, but I realized it's been such a long time since I last watched it. But I put it on, and from Steve from the opening, Steve Buscemi in the bar telling the story about this this Mexican El Mariachi with a, a guitar case full of weapons. It's just so good. It's I mean I do like the uh, El Mariachi, the Robert Rodriguez film which started this all the real low budget one which yeah. is what sort of put rodriguez on the map yeah uh, but it's just Anthony banderas is just fantastic steve buscemi is brilliant danny trejo is just perfection with his scowl and his throwing knives uh selma hayek is luminescent and brilliant as well mm -hmm. uh strong female lead which is yep. always good but yep. uh, just i love the fact as well uh somebody mentioned it because i mentioned it on twitter they were talking about the film they say the and i agree they love uh Banderas is a uh, shooting face. He's got this like grimace as he's doing yeah, it. He's yeah, almost yeah. like flicking the, the guns as he's doing uh -huh. it. It's just, but he's also, I like the way as well. He's not, uh, he's not the, he's not the super, you know, he's, he's, he's not untouchable in this one. He gets, he gets, much he, gets as bloody, as he gets shot as well. He's in a panic. He's trying to get, he's scrabbling for guns and weapons. But he just, it's, it's just so, so good. It's very bloody. Quentin Tantino gets shot in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just loads of great moments, and I was really glad I went back to revisit it. Yeah, it's hands down one of the, the greatest action movies of all time, in my opinion. I, I can watch that movie endlessly. I love it so much. Um, it's it's just brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I want to go back now and rewatch. Uh, what was it? Once Upon a Time in Mexico. In Mexico, which was a big disappointment in my opinion after Desperado. But yeah, yeah. I didn't visit it because I only watched it the once that one. I need to watch that again because there were bits again I liked, and maybe I might appreciate it a bit more with. Some yeah, with some time and, and lowered expectations, I think is yeah. uh, could be a key part of it. So, all right, very good. Well, my number three film is um, also an action film, and it is Wrath of Man. Uh, the oh, new yeah, Guy yeah. Ritchie film starring Jason Statham. Now, I'm hit or miss with Guy Ritchie films. Uh, I am a monstrously big Jason Statham fan. I watch every movie that he comes out with, so I know I'm, you know, you know, you knew I was going to watch it. Um, but Guy yeah. Ritchie, kind of like, eh, you never know with Guy Ritchie how it's going to be. And I have to say, Wrath of Man, utterly fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. It is just terrific. It is, uh, it is violent, um, but not. I mean, it's pretty violent, but it has a story to it. Uh, and it's got like a whole sort of time jumping thing. So you sort of like you start in the middle of the story and then it flashes back and then it kind of goes forward and then back. Um, and it is just you kind of figuring out what's going on as you're going. I mean, the basic storyline is Jason Statham is an armored security truck um, security guard uh, for a company that keeps getting hit with armed robberies. Uh, but there's more to it than that. And that's what we learn as the film goes on. The action sequences are just stunning. Statham is badass as always. Josh Hartnett, of all people, 
turns into this electrifying performance. He usually plays like the soft-spoken nice guy, and here he plays like a complete jerk, like cocky, you know, a-hole type okay. character, uh, which is so against type but he's he's utterly fantastic in it. Um, really good supporting cast. Like a lot of like those, I've seen that guy before, faces, you know. Yeah, it's got the uh, guy from Burn Notice in, hasn't it, as well? Yeah, it's Jeffrey Donovan, he's in it too, yep. Um, but just really, really really loved it. I mean, I was glued to the TV the whole time. It is like it is like a, a 90s action film, but the best kind of 90s action film, not not the cheesy ones. Um, and it's it's great. If you want like a good action fix, like a hard hitting, like, you know, lots of guns, you know, kind of like a heat, but without all the talking. Yeah, yeah. Get that middle section <laughs> of and like make it into a movie and that's that's Wrath of Man. Uh, it's fantastic. So. Actually, I do like Jason Statham and I, I I like you, uh, Guy Ritchie. I do. I'm always intrigued to see his films. I do like what he does with some of them. And of course, yeah. Guy Ritchie and Jason Statham started. You know, they both yeah. sort of came to light with their Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. So it's exactly. I'm, I'm intrigued to see that one. But I'll, I'll, I will be getting that watch when I get the chance. Okay. Yeah. Great. My great. my next one, uh, my second, my number two film also features lots of guns, lots of gunfighting. But it is from 2019 as well. It's Guns Akimbo. It just oh, yeah. Prime here, starring Daniel Radcliffe, Samara Weaving, directed by Jason Lee Howden. Uh, also stars Reese Darby from Flight of the Concord doing his thing. He seems to do all the time now, just pops up as a weird kind of sport right. <laughs> in so many different things now. Yeah. Maybe it's all, maybe it's like the old variants, you know, Loki variants from different things. But anyway, uh, well, yeah, uh, Guns Akimbo, it's a very vibrant, over the top, uh, I would almost say mess of a film, but I really enjoyed the hell out of it. It's it's very it's very of the now, it's dealing with social media and the way people just like watching terrible things on the internet and it's there's this a thing a site called schism which basically pits people against each other to kill them and daniel radcliffe harry potter himself although sorry daniel i didn't mean to say that because you you have done some amazing choices with your the way you pick all these different films i really like the choices you've made since since uh, those films because it's uh, you haven't rested on your laurels you keep pushing yourself doing things you you want to do which is good but he's great in this his american accent's actually not too bad but he's a guy who just isn't going anywhere in life He's a bit of a keyboard warrior trying to put down the trolls. So he does that one night on this Schism website. Then he gets drunk, and then he gets the people who run Schism come and get him, knock him out, do some terrible surgery on him, and basically bolt guns to his hands. And literally to his, to his hands, he can't do anything else because the guns are there. So there's lots of him trying to open doors, trying to go to the toilet, uh, put on clothes and stuff, and it's all there's lots of physical comedy with that as well. But then there's also huge, big, bloody gunfights with some cool graphics popping up all the time. As I said, it's very vibrant. Of uh, I'm not sure there's strobe lights or anything, so you might be careful if you do have a bit of a sensitive head with those kind of things. But it's, I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's just fast, crazy, brutal, very funny as well. Uh, and it was, it didn't overstay its welcome. But that's uh, that was my thing. Number two. Like Great way to describe it. I actually like that movie too. Uh, I mm -hmm. saw it when it came out, um, and I, I I feel like I shouldn't have liked it because it is yeah, kind of yeah, this, yeah. you know it is like kind of a grimy, dirty, unpleasant movie in some ways. But then it's also really fun and over the top and enjoyable. And Daniel Radcliffe is terrific in it, like yeah. you said. Such a nice guy. Such a good character. Yeah. Yeah, and is and he's I think he spends most of the film in a bathrobe or something like that. But yeah, it's it's a weird one for sure. But. Um, <laughs> it is really fun. Like, it's not a movie that'll make you feel good about yourself for watching it, but like, you know, it's it's just enjoyable and and silly and over the top uh, and very violent. So yeah, I, I, that's a good choice. I'm glad that you've watched that because I, I did enjoy it. Yeah, well, it was good. Fun. And Samara Weaving is the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. The main antagonist. She's she's brilliant. I like everything I've seen her in there. Yeah, well, it's very I, I know because she's got like bleach blonde eyebrows. Right. It rarely changes her appearance, but uh, yeah, she's a good character and her backstory because yeah, yeah. They do actually have some good backstories, these characters, for considering the film. A lot mm -hmm. better than lots of other films, which we we'll often get nowadays, but it, it does it does it well. But if you're just after something to, just to pass the time and then just have a bit of a laugh, it's it's worth checking out. Yeah, but it is yeah. very violent and bloody. So. Yes, yes. Yeah, Guns Akimbo. That was a, that was one I was not expecting to like, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. My number two goes back to 1999, actually. Um, so maybe the oldest film on the list so far. I don't remember all of them, but um, yeah, it, it was the Sixth Sense. Oh, okay. yeah. um, my wife and I. My daughter is fourteen. She watches a lot of TV and movies, and you know, she. I mean, we don't. She doesn't watch much of the R-rated stuff, but you know, she watches a lot of TV shows, a lot of the streaming shows and stuff. She's pretty mature. Um, 
and there's references to Sixth Sense everywhere. And she, we, she likes thrillers. She likes horror movies. Not, not horror horror movies, but she likes definitely likes the sort of the suspense, the darker stuff, the creature movies, things like that. And so um, we were just kind of saying, like, we got to get her to watch this before it gets spoiled for her. Because, yeah, yeah, you know, so much, The Sixth Sense is a great movie, whether you know the twist or not. But it's so such a magical moment when that twist hits you and you don't know what's coming. Um, and, you know, as we thought she was old enough. Actually, it's interesting watching it now so much later. is like, I don't think that movie is barely even scary at all, to be honest with you. Like, I think it gets lumped in as a horror film, but I really don't find it scary. In, in very couple of scenes that are a little bit creepy. But overall, it's really not it's a scary it's movie. It's jump scares, isn't it? Like, with the there's one or two, yeah, yeah, but it's a pretty, um, it's more of a, dr a drama or a psychological thriller than anything else. But um, I'm happy to say she loved it. She didn't see the twist coming at all, um, and I loved it. You know, it's it's a great film to go back to because I think everyone's sort of like, everyone's seen the Sixth Sense, everyone knows the twist, and then you sort of don't watch it for like ten years, but then you go back and watch it again, and it's just it's a really well done film. It's it's fun to watch it knowing what you know about the ending, and seeing how they work around all those things, and then it's also just a really good movie about this this doctor and this kid and he's trying to help him and of course the kid seeing dead people is such a great concept for a movie um it, it really holds up and so we enjoyed it all, all three of us enjoyed watching it my daughter loved it so that was a great experience brilliant yeah it's been i don't think i've really watched it since shortly after it came out maybe i watched it again a couple of years after but i've not watched it since uh it's funny because my channel and he's got a new film coming out i think next week yes, uh, yes. called uh Old, which Old. is based on a graphic novel called Sandcastle, which looks intriguing. But, uh, yeah. And we also went after the ending of The Sixth Sense, way back in episode 21. Right, I right. I don't recall what I actually... I don't either. I remember the endings way back then, but it's yeah, episode 21, so if you want to scroll back through the podcast where you're listening on to this, uh, you'll be able to go and see what we, we did after the ending for that one. But uh, Yeah. And, yeah uh, I should revisit it. I've not seen it in a long time. Yeah, it's definitely worth revisiting. We have a we do have a comment. Christine says it was scary the first time I watched it. I agree. It was scary the first time I watched it too, but I feel like watching it again now. I don't know. It just wasn't I just didn't I didn't see it as that that scary this time around. So I don't know. Go figure. Yeah. Okay. All right, Phil, what's next? Your okay, well, one. the most recent one I watched it was actually earlier today. Okay. Uh, when I was having some food. It was uh from 2005, but it's a remake of a John Carpenter film from 1976. It's Assault on Precinct 13. This is mm -hmm. the one that stars Ethan Hawke, Lawrence Fishburne, John Leguizamo, uh, Brian Dennehy, uh, Maria Bello, and Gabriel Byrne, and lots of other people. Uh, it's because I saw it, it was on, I was looking, looking for, wanted to watch something. I'd uh, Desperado, I want to see some with guns, but then this came up on the list, and I thought, oh, I love the original. I know I've seen this one, but I didn't recall too much about it. And so I thought, well, let's go back and see what it's like. And I enjoyed it. It's a, it's a pretty decent thriller. It's almost like a, a sequel to Training Day. Mm -hmm. I think, well, because Ethan Hawke was in Training Day when he's just starting out with this one. He's a bit older. There's a, we've got. It's a bit different to the Stephen King one because we get a bit of a prequel scene too because we see Ethan Hawke's character is that a botched undercover thing, undercover thing, which is not his confidence, but it, it basically follows the same story, beats the same elements, but there's some of the things that change. It's not so much a street gang, it's more dodgy police and things like that. But I, I like the way it, it worked. It's a good story. It's a, it's based, I think it's been based like Rio Bravo originally anyway. there's it's it's The basic story's been used in lots of other films and things, but uh, probably back at, when it came out, you know, why do you want to remake Assault on Precinct 15? Uh, Salt and Peace in 13, sorry. You know, it is really good, the original. It's the usual thing, remakes, why bother? But going back and seeing it now after time's gone by, I I kind of liked it. They could maybe have got by by calling it something else, to be honest. I just feel it as another thriller, but it's good performances from people, a few twists and turns. Some I saw coming when I originally watched it, some I didn't. But uh, I probably enjoyed it more this time than when I first watched it way back when, when it first came out. So interestingly enough, I actually, I really like the remake of Assault on Precinct 13. I love the original film. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. John Carpenter's. It's a cult classic. But I, from the first time I saw it, I saw it in theaters. I think that the, the remake is a surprisingly good film. Yeah, um, it's a good remake. Really well. Yeah. It's, and it's uh, a bit more beat, uh, there's a bit more beat, meat on the bones to this one compared to the, the John sure. Carpenter one. Because I think he parted that right down just to make it, you know, raw yeah. and, and right. You don't really get to see much else outside of the precinct, which is really good. That works really well for that. But the bits we do see outside on this one, the world building and the bits going on and the, what we learn about the other characters is really good. 
Yeah. There's, there are a lot more characters in this one. But it's, right, right. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as hopeless, though, as... Yes, agreed. But, uh, agreed, but I do like it. I do like it quite a bit, actually. I think it's a very good film, so... Yeah. And it's a great cast. I'm really glad, glad that you enjoyed re-watching it. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, my most recent film, my number one, if you will, uh, is actually the second Guy Ritchie film on my list, believe it or oh, not. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, it is Snatch from back in, I think, 2000, 2001 um, with uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Jason Satham again. Uh, and I'm watching it because they just released it on 4K Ultra HD. And believe it or not, I had never seen Snatch before. Um, okay. It's one of those films a lot of people really like. And I just, it's one of those movies. You know how it is. Everybody watching knows how it is. It's just those movies that you kind of want to see and you never quite get around to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I got my review copy of the 4K release. So I said, well, now's the time to watch it. So I watched it. And I actually have to say, I wasn't expecting too much because it's kind of Guy Ritchie's like geezer gangster genre that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not a big fan of Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Um, but I quite enjoyed Snatch, actually. It's very hyperkinetic. It's very... Um, a little over the top it's it's edited to within an inch of its life you know it's like a music video um spread out over two hours but it's all about these various criminals trying to steal this diamond back and forth and all these other things that go on and you know it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a silly in places but it's also interesting in places it's got some really good rapid fire kind of dialogue and like you know look at the way criminals do things and stuff but it's a fun movie and i enjoyed it uh, a lot more than i than i expected to um, so yeah, Snatch. I, I know people really like it. Um, I've heard for years about Brad Pitt and how you can't understand a word he's saying and how funny that is. And I get it now. I, I get yeah. it. He's funny in that movie. <laughs> I like it. The whole yeah. storyline is, is really cool. Trying to get a, a caravan camper for his mom. Or his man. What, what I got a caravan from a ma. That's yeah, that's it. Yeah. Caravan from a ma. Caravan like, from a ma. You're what? His ma. You know, like that <laughs> whole thing. It's, it's funny. I, 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 uh, I enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, that's my number. My number one, my most recent movie was Snatch. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that film when it, it came out, I, but I don't think I've watched it since then. But uh, right. I, yeah. it's got a new release, so it's, uh, it's one I should probably go back and watch again. Not something I think I'll be revisiting all the time, but I'm glad I finally got around to it. I did enjoy it quite a bit. So yeah. there we go. So all right. The last, the last five films we watched, that's a pretty good list. Huh? I like it. I was going to say, that's actually, we've been watching some pretty good movies. This will not always be the case, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, next time we do this list, I'm sure there's going to be the time where it's going to be like, yeah, I was watching... Uh, My Little Pony the movie or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah. but, uh, I think there will be some embarrassing things, but that will just add to it because, you know, we just we just watch anything and everything. That's right. Well, that's exactly. We're both big film buffs. We watch a lot of movies, and so it's going to be some hits, some miss. This happened to be mostly hits, um, but there will sure be times where it's going to be like three or four movies in a row that are like, why did I waste the time watching this movie? You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It does, it does happen sometimes. <laughs> All right. So let's Let's get to our final segment then for the day. It is ATE Recommends. What are we digging on right now? What are we enjoying? What are we reading? Watching? Probably not going to do watching because we just did that, but um, that was sort of the whole list, but uh, things like that. <laughs> um, what are we into or enjoying right now? This is our little recommendations for you guys. I suppose I should go first then. Yeah, that's right. Sense. As as uh, Mike said, this is anything else. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be film related. It can be any form of media. It could be, yeah. If you've seen yeah. this, you know you know the deal. But yeah, Mike, what's your recommendations this time? All right. Well, this is. I think it's my first time doing a game. Uh, you've done a couple, but I have mm -hmm. not. So this is the, my recommendation today. Is a, is a game called Ringmaster. Okay, oh, okay. It's, and it's a small box, as you can see. It's pretty small, and when you open it up, there's just a little velvet pouch with a deck of like 50 cards in it. It's a pretty simple game. I actually played it at a friend's house. I ordered it to take on vacation because I had so much fun playing it. It's very very quick and that's what i like about it it's like a five minute game but you can play five or six rounds in a row because it's a little different every time and basically you're the ringmaster of the circus you get a deck of cards or a handful of cards you're trying to collect attractions and when you get a certain amount of attractions down and on the table in front of you you win the game but of course there are modifying cards that change things trade cards with people steal other people's cards have to give up your cards have to discard cards all of these things it's very fast paced it's very fun um, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's travel size, which I like, so I can throw it in my backpack, taking it with us on vacation for the, you know, kind of at the end of the night when you're sort of winding down and you want to just sort of, you know, do yeah. something for a couple minutes. And also, it's super cheap. I think I got it on Amazon for like ten bucks. So you know, mm -hmm. I love games, but some of them are super expensive. You know, I always oh, yeah. have eighty dollars to drop on a board game. Uh, but Ringmaster was like ten dollars. Super fun, super fast, super transportable. 
what more could you ask for? So that's it. It's called Ringmaster. It's from Ultra Pro Games, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I really liked it, and you, you learn it in about five seconds. It's super easy. Uh, but, I mean, that's that's brilliant because sometimes I do love board games and games, but sometimes you need the quick and easy ones like that. It's, it's often we yeah. play them in between some of the bigger ones, and that's what we did you, exactly. Yeah. It's like a palate cleanser. <laughs> if you can do it when you you know traveling as well. Right. Messy, my family yeah. doesn't like the super crazy board games that take like an hour to set up. That's not really their thing. Uh, they like these types, the, the quick and easy ones. So that's why I'm taking it on vacation with this. Excellent. Well, my recommendation, well, I've got, have you got, did you just have the one or any more? I've got one today, yep. I've got two. The first one I mentioned briefly in the, the main feature, it's the Alien, the role-playing game starter set cool. by Free cool. League. That's the front uh, of the box. That's it's pretty. Got, that's one of the, the great things about it, it's got stunning artwork through it. But it's got everything you need in the box to do an adventure, and then you can. It's quite quite, quite cheap as well. I think it's twenty twenty five. Nice. So you get some cool dice in it, uh, which have various symbols and things like that. Which it's got a new good mechanic. You get cards. You get some pre generated characters. You get you get a rule book, which is has everything you need to play. But it's also got great artwork on the front. Nice. Again, and cool artwork inside. Lots of little uh, asides as well, written as if by people in the there as well it's got a great timeline for uh for the whole of the alien thing including all the covenant films and what goes on and it, it puts it on the timeline and what happens after the, the films we've seen so it does it everything's canon from what we've seen i think apart from the alien versus predator films it also comes with a uh, an adventure chariot of the gods which kind of starts off like the original alien film but then goes Wow, from totally different ways, but again, as I said, it's got everything you need. Although you do need to read a little, you need to make sure you're the the keeper. Or actually, no, because you have a games master, dungeon master, or keeper, and other things. And this one, it's the uh, the game mother, based on the uh -huh. so I really like that. That's but you cool. do, if you're going to run it, you've got to make sure you read through everything uh, a number of times because it's lots of it. It doesn't it doesn't hold your hand, but it's it's not difficult to do. But just make sure you read it and you're aware of it. But that's. Well, we, and we have a comment before you get to your next one. We have a comment, oh, yeah. Jay, uh, who says, yes, I can't wait for that Alien game. Um, I agree, Jay. I I'm, I'm kind of want to check it out myself now. I don't really play role-playing games, but I kind of want to, so I'm going to have to check it out just for the book and the artwork stuff. Um, and then we have a comment. i got to share. This came in right, right at the end, but it's pretty funny from Richard about our oh, yeah. top five list. It says it's, it's turning into a Facebook meme. Name the first five movies on your right. Uh, which is very funny because that is a lot of the Facebook stuff. Like you're trapped on an island with the first five people that are comment, you know, whatever. Who, how are you going to do? Blah blah blah. So this is kind of like, yeah, the the first five <laughs> movies on our on our right. That is a little bit of what we did. So well played, sir. Well played. Yes, excellent. And uh, well, my second recommendation is it's got a, a connection to Alien, and that Lance Henriksen's mm -hmm. in it. I recently started watching or rewatching. Well, it's I only remember watching a few episodes. But it's Millennium. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah series i picked up all three seasons uh, i forgot to bring up the first one which i'm currently watching uh got all three seasons on dvd on ebay for 12 pound in total wow nice which is a bargain because i remember watching some of the episodes when it was it first came out in 95 i think or 96 uh i'm really enjoying it but then never followed it through but i always every now and again it pops up on like a list of the best tv shows you never watched and things yeah, like that yeah so i, I got these and eventually Got time on my schedule of other films and shows. I finished a few, so we got this started. But it's uh, it's from Chris C Carter, who cr created the X Files, and there are some similarities. It touches on it, and Frank uh, Lance Henriksen plays Frank Black, who does crop up in a in an X Files episode. But it's just it's very dark. It's a lot darker than other things. It's more almost like a precursor to uh, Criminal Minds and other serial killer things, because Frank Black is chasing down serial killers uh, and more. On behalf of the Millennium Group, and I do believe it changes tone each season a little bit, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far, really loving it, and it's uh, good to go back and watch something that I didn't miss back in the day. That's pretty cool. I, I'm like you. I definitely watched some episodes back in the day, but I never followed it fully. I always felt like it was a little bit too dark for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, um, I, I that would be intriguing to go back and kind of rewatch the whole thing and sort of see if, if my opinion of it changes. So that's yeah. pretty cool. And Lance Henriksen is just so good to watch. Just the yeah, way he yeah. just like, blank stare, but it's just you can tell there's so much going on behind the eyes. It's just yeah. Yeah, really good. He's great. All right, very cool. So there you go. Some things you guys can engage in to occupy your time, some games and some TV shows today. Uh, and um, I think I'm going to say that's going to start to wrap us up because we are uh, 
We're running a little long for this episode, but that's okay once in a while. I hope you guys don't mind. We got some nice comments from people. Thank you, everybody, for, for jumping in there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, uh, all right, so Phil, any last word? Uh, no, just uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I hope we've recommended some films that you might want to go and either see for the first time or revisit. Uh, also, yeah. always let us know the last few films you've watched as well. It's always good because there's plenty of films that we've yet to see, and it's always nice to know yeah. what you think of the films that we've watched or the films that you've recently watched. So right, we must share, share some comments, you know, do that. And yeah, also, we'll any way you can leave ratings on any of the podcast uh, places where you're listening to the podcast, podcast platforms always leave a rating if you can because it's always very much appreciated and it helps get us up in the algorithm so other people can find us and yeah. we can all become one big happy community <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right well i can't say any better than that so on that note uh i will bring this episode to a close as always we thank you for watching and or listening i'm mike spring and i'm phil edwards and we'll see you next time after the ending